Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Poland Daily History. Today we are at the city of Lublin, one of the oldest and most historical city of Eastern Poland. We'll be going to the Catholic University of Lublin to talk to a professor, a Polish-Canadian, who wrote the first history book in English about Lublin. In the first quarter of the 14th century, when Lublin gained municipal rights, would you say that is when the city started thriving and started growing? Well, yes and no. That's more or less a confirmation. Right. Lublin was a thriving center. Oh. And uh, it was meeting certain uh, requirements, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it had to establish a kind of a city square along, uh, along certain, according to the Magdeburg law. Okay. It would have a parish church, but also was a royal town, of course, as a, so it had the castle. Uh, and uh, it also gained uh, an, a degree of self-government, mm. as there was a municipal council. Right. Although the, the well, the borough, the, the borough chief was a nobleman, but but the municipal council re re represented the the merchant class and so on, and, mm -hmm. and the the wealthier citizens of the of the city. Mm -hmm. And yes, yeah, so this was a, but of course, it was the beginning of uh, Lublin growing even quicker. Part of this uh, sh development was, was uh, involved the stability of the time. So th the invasions didn't come to an end, but uh, the, uh, the Piast dynasty had expanded the borders further to the east into, into Ruthenia. And so it was far more stable at this time. That indirectly indicates uh, the wealth of the city is the uh, the presence of the mendicant orders, the Dominican fathers, which would be very important later, uh, later on and throughout the history of Lublin, you could say, well, uh, they didn't, as mendicant, uh, as a mendicant order, together with the Franciscan fathers, they didn't receive land when they came. They, no. So, so they had to, you know, gain uh, money from people that were attending uh, attending their their right. services. And so that meant that the city had to be rich enough to support them. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, was it sufficient? Or? Well, that's why they came. Okay. So that, that's an indication that the city was fairly well off. So, that so, for, inst mm -hmm. uh, so for instance, they were a preaching order, mm -hmm. so, they had, so they had to be popular. Right. Actually, the church was the beginning of the, uh, you could say, the beginning of the cultural life of the city. They had organs and so mm -hmm. on. They developed organs later on, music and things. That, so. Uh, the early, uh, you could say, culture and education, of course, was connected with, with the church. Not to mention, just a little bit later, things like hospitals and things like mm -hmm. that came, came from the church. Lublin receiving its municipal rights in 1317 was a watershed moment in the city's development. Next up, we will ask Professor Garbowski about the privileges the municipal rights gave the city. What, what other changes did the municipal right bring to the city? Well, I think one thing that we have with us to this very day, the coat of arms that All they right. received at that time. So they received this goat, which uh, not that uh, the earliest record of that goat is the be already the beginning of the, uh, the, 15th, uh, the 14th century. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And, uh, it only gained that vine a little bit later that, uh, that's very, very striking at this point, and, and what well, was striking maybe a century later. But uh, that meant that, well, the municipal council, for instance, could stamp documents. Right. <laughs> and, uh, but the, the thing is, it's very amusing because, uh, well, coats of arms of countries are usually fairly uh, militant. Right. Whereas uh, here you have a goat. A goat on a vine. <laughs> a goat on a vine, eventually on a vine. Mm -hmm. And that's fairly amusing. But uh, whether it was amusing at the time, that's, that's what the historians wonder about. So they, right. uh, one of the historians has two theories. Mm -hmm. so he was saying that the, the people that, that designed coats of arms at that time were quite erudite. Okay. So either it had to do something with ancient history mm -hmm. or mythology mm -hmm. of some 
of some sort, okay. or it had to do with, with the Bible. Right. And uh, with the Bible, you uh, have, uh, on the Gniezno doors, you have a goat mm. representing a scapegoat. All right. And uh, why, would there be a scape why would there be a scapegoat for the city? Well, I'm just guessing, and actually mm -hmm. I haven't come, up, I come across a good explanation why would there be a scapegoat, but mm -hmm. during the Middle Ages, with the type of religiosity you had at that time, when you had crises, mm -hmm. then uh, you did penitence. Right. <laughs> and so perhaps a, a scapegoat might have been connected with, uh, with some sort of penitence that, that the, the residents wanted better times ahead. Right. But uh, that, that's just a guess. Mm -hmm. So On you're saying... Other, uh, mm -hmm. If I might continue, uh, later on, mm -hmm. the source is lost. Right. So oh. we don't know how, how it was designed, mm -hmm. why it was designed. So mm -hmm. these are only the historical guesses. But later on, people had to live with this coat of arms for the next <laughs> centuries. And uh, a contemporary writer in Lublin made an amusing story about how uh, these Lublin merchants went to uh, the prince mm -hmm. in, uh, in Krakow mm -hmm. to gain, uh, and, and they had to come up with a coat of arms, and they had very little money, so they were fooled into accepting a goat. So you're saying that the, there's actually no documented, well, as far as we know, yes, about yes. the coat of armor Lublin being the, the but, goat. Well, no. It, it's known that the goat was the, the coat of arms, right, but, right, but, but the, the reason. reason for it is unknown. Right. Yes. Okay. So uh, that uh, gives a lot of room for the imagination for historians mm -hmm. and for writers interested in Lublin's history. The city of Lublin has actually one of the most famous old towns of Poland. It's breathtaking, I would say. I was wondering though, what are the origins, what are the functions of the old town, why, why it was built and what function did they serve? Yes, well, uh, of course, the old town, of course, was, as, as I mentioned, was uh, if one of the re requirements for gaining municipal rights. Mm -hmm. So it had to be, uh, be developed according a, to a specific design. Uh, and, uh, well, one of the problems was that because of the terrain, it's also among the smaller old towns. Right. Was... And that it, they had to make do with what they had. Mm -hmm. So it was, it's much, it's also one of, but it's larger than, for instance, that other old, older settlement where, uh, where that church I mentioned, St. Mm -hmm. Nicholas Church is located, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, still not that large. No? Yes, and that's one of its charms in, in a sense, but of course it, uh, it, some limitations came of it. If I could just sneak ahead to the future when Lublin became uh, the seat of one of the uh, tribunals of the, of the uh, kingdom of, of Poland, mm -hmm. much, uh, much, much later, the medieval building that was built for that, for that tribunal sort of ha had to be rebuilt. They built it in the 18th century, they built a huge tribunal which was too big for that square in the old town. Mm -hmm. I find it, well, I find it a little too big for that because of course that was what one might say nowadays, mm -hmm. a federal building right. and, the, and the old town was simply just the city of Lublin. Right. So, so there's that contrast mm -hmm. between the, the state function and the, uh, a city for people and the merchants and so on and, and uh, which, had to fit into the, to those city walls. But the last, the last thing I'll, I'll mention about that point is towards the end of that period of the, of the Piast dynasty, you could say that where, uh, when Lublin, that was in power when Lublin gained its municipal rights. When uh, King Kazimierz was ruling, uh, he, uh, he built walls around the, the castle, sort of, mm. sort of masonry walls before it was still a, a wooden, Cast <laughs> Fort fortification mm -hmm. up until that point. So that puts a, that puts a nice seal on the on the uh, Piast period. As we have seen today, Lublin has a very long yet at times dramatic history. 
but places such as the Catholic University of Lublin sufficiently demonstrated the city spirit and their love for freedom. I'm your host, Benjamin Lee. I'll see you next time on Poland Daily History.